Hello boys and girls, welcome back to our channel, yet another bad rap for you guys. Hello. Uh, it's again, here Steve with his Signar yeah. facing me, Kador. Why don't you tell us which list you brought today? Yeah, so we've got a tournament coming up and I've been training a bit with uh, Nemo 3, so here's my other list. So it's Maddox, and uh, actually if you want to know what the list is, you can look at any other Maddox player and it's the same list. So I like to admit when I've been netlisting, but in this case uh, this is a list that I arrived to independently, even though it's the same. I mean, I don't care if anyone <laughs> believes me, just for my own, ca oh, my own um, uh, peace of mind, I know that I came up with this list, but it is the same list that everyone else is taking, so it's, uh, it's Maddox with a squire. And I guess got, it's just that obvious. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you're building the list, sometimes you have to make compromises and this and that, but Maddox in Storm Division is pretty, you know, you just get the the units to get the free points, then the free points are pretty easy to spend. Some people like to, to bring um, Acosta instead of a Storm Bay Captain, for example, or Strange Ways instead of the Squire, uh, for whatever reason. But So there's some very slight variations, but the base of it is uh, Maddox using up exactly her points with a Stormcloud and an Ironclad. She's got the Squire attached. Uh, and then we've got the Journeyman Warcaster with a Firefly, same as every other Signal list ever. Uh, and the other free uh, solo is the Stormblade Captain. And then we've got a unit of Stormblades with the CA and two weapon attachments. We've got two full units of Storm Lancers and we've got Ladder Moor. And I think that's it. So it's... Something like 12 points, 13 points of free models, which is pretty nice. And I kept on saying to Leon before we started that it looks like a huge number of models. Yeah. Because I'm saving a lot of money by not taking a lot of jacks. And uh, yeah, it's nice to have a lot of infantry on the table. It actually makes a bit of a refreshing change for Mark III. It's been a while that I've seen Signar infantry. Still got three jacks in the list though, so it's weird. It's like it's not yeah. not quite uh, infantry spam, but Maddox is great for infantry. Uh, she does loads of stuff to um, with like Stormblades and Stormlances that they want, like armor buff, uh, some other stuff that I can't remember right now. But anyway, so the uh, the whole point of this list is the Stormblade Captain really allows you to charge through your own models. So you have a line of Stormlances, you have a line of Stormblades, and a line of Stormlances behind that. And they can all charge in waves over each other. You've got Laddermore and the Stormblade Captain can also get out there. And then... Um, uh, hopefully your punch is enough that the counter punch is pretty weedy and even if it's pretty strong you've still got the ironclad and stormclad uh, following up uh, so yeah so that do you, was do you feel that you for all the free points you're getting you're giving up anything not that really you wouldn't no, take anyway? that's the, i think that's why maddox is so because you because it's storm uh, division mm. uh, so everyone's immune to electricity which is nice you get that advanced move on the storm blades which they really need um and then, yeah, I mean, and it's just three points, and she doesn't need mercenaries to uh, function. Mm -hmm. This is why I'm sort of hesitant to use the Storm Division with Striker 2, because of what he has to give up with the mercenaries. And she's got Pathfinder, Yeah. and um, all of these guys want Pathfinder. Yeah, that'd be uh, really nice. Which is, yeah, I think that might be a best spell, actually. Uh, certainly the one that I kept up the whole game. So, your list... I am running the same list as last time. The only difference this time is that both Behemoth and the Devastator are painted. Yay! So slowly making our way to having uh, painted armies. Looks really good. Before we start changing things up again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, just to quickly uh, reiterate, it's Butcher 3. Uh, in this battle group are all of the Jacks. So it's Ruin, it's two Juggernauts, it's a Devastator, Behemoth. And then he also has a Bokur to protect him, or a Midwinter, a uh, Medlin Corbeau, and a Goblin uh, Gobber Tinker. That's it. Cool. So there's quite a difference in the model count on this side. Still looking at five uh, heavies, which I don't like to look at across the table. <laughs> and we're on the pit. Uh, which is cool. Don't know what to say about that. I mean, we knew that there would be some fighting happening in the middle there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, we're all off, and um, I rolled higher and chose table sides mm -hmm. because I liked the idea of um, being able to protect Butcher a bit. Um, and moving to my flag of course you have lots of shooting uh, you have snipe as well so uh, it will be quite easy to uh, to damage butcher 
on the top of top of one. Mm -hmm. uh, so I figured having having these walls there would protect me uh, and then move on to the flag on my second turn. Um, that was so you were considering the scenario? Yeah, yeah, definitely, yes. Scenarios are main consideration. Uh, I guess in hindsight I could have also uh, uh, chosen that same side uh, because you kind of have to funnel your army through that gap in the middle, even though it was fair, a fairly large gap, but mm -hmm. um, at least it meant that you might have to put uh, your, your army in two, two waves. Uh, but it was mostly scenario based. Okay, well, um, so I got to go first, which meant I set up first, and you can see here. So uh, rather than the three layered uh, plan that I was describing earlier, I decided to put one of the units of storm lances up on the right hand side, on the right flank, just to go around the uh, the forest there. And they would still have uh, the opportunity to charge into the zone, towards the zone, or because of this crazy Pathfinder spell, the uh, rough terrain there didn't really mean anything to me. So it just gave me. It just meant that you couldn't uh, put safely put anything out on the on my right flank. Uh, it would have been a rough, uh, rough terrain setup if you hadn't been playing Maddox. Yes. Yeah. That would have but then I wouldn't tricky. have had the same number of models. Yeah. But then yeah, so I was set up for the uh, storm blades and the uh, storm lances on the left to just wedge up between the um, house and the forest there, and that would uh, be fine to manage because of the uh, being able to move across each other. Otherwise, it would have been a bit more difficult to get set up. So, yeah, so that uh, was exactly what I did. And you can see here it's very jammed. Um, so I got all of the uh, the usual upkeep spells. Uh, I got the armor, uh, arcane shield up on the left-hand lances. I put snipe up on the right-hand lances because I felt like they weren't really going to get shot. And it would possibly be possible that I would be using them to shoot on the following turn. Got onslaught on Maddox. Uh, you just when you've got Maddox, you put onslaught up and you keep it up for the whole game. And uh, the Dauntless Resolve I got up on the Storm Blades, and I think the only mistake I made on this turn was not putting the mini feet up on the Storm Blades because armor twenty one against pretty much all of your melee is may as well be the same as armor fifteen because uh, power nineteen they die on threes so. Uh, the actual thing, only thing I, that my armor spells in this game are going to do is save me from your shooting. And um, so it would have been better to have the extra arm up on the storm blades. I have to remember that next time. If I'm up against the melee army with any kind of shooting, then it's still worth doing that. Yeah. Uh, especially against Kador. Uh, apart from that, I just want to keep Maddox uh, safe. She's by no means a frontline caster, so she's uh, certainly got the uh, forest between her and Butcher. And that forest is. I know is going to be useful for uh, protecting her uh, for the rest of the game. Uh, that it's a big enough forest that she can sit kind of in the middle and not have line of sight from anyone outside of the forest. And there's always this hill on the left to uh, protect her if, if needs be. Um, yeah, I don't think I need to go any more detail than that. So yeah, so whatever Leon does on his turn, he's got a lot of uh, pointy lances uh, to worry about. And uh, pretty much covered the zone, so anything that goes in the zone is probably going to be dead on the next turn. So, um, so yeah, that was um, quite a daunting sight. Um, so I charged ruin. Um, uh, I charged ruin with um, charge of storm lances with ruin. So he's up uh, up in your face quite aggressively. Uh, I expected him to die, uh, but I wanted to trigger some kind of a peace uh, peace trade. Mm -hmm. As you can see behind, him, there's a, there's a juggernaut to 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 um, countercharge things if it's uh, if it comes to this. But more importantly, Butcher is uh, is uh, in this case still hiding behind the wall, uh, but he easily at range to to charge anything that came near Ruin, uh, especially um, if you consider his other movement tricks. Then the, the one dog stays behind uh, to make sure he doesn't get killed and uh, somehow take away a um, relentless charge. And one dog uh, moved towards the center, um, hoping that something would actually cause uh, uh, cause vengeance. And then on the right hand side, pretty straightforward, the Devastator just uh, ran forward, uh, just towing into the zone. I uh, don't really have a plan for him except for him to just be annoying which he always manages to do. Very annoying. Yeah, uh, Juggernaut moves up a bit as well, and uh, Behemoth uh, was just able to uh, have have a range to a Stormlance. So he took two powerful shots and took out one Stormlance, caused uh, minor damage to uh, to his other two Stormlances next to the one, and uh, took out two or three Storm Knights. Yeah. So already causing some, uh, some minor damage there. So that was the reason if I'd had my... Um 
spell up, then I would have lost the Storm Lance, but not the Storm Blades. And considering that would have probably been a couple of power 18 attacks later in the game, and it's actually... Uh, yeah, and your Storm Lance, that guy is, is already really quite a bit of damage you prevent later in the game. Yeah. Um, as you can see, also the Juggernauts kind of cover uh, the Devastator, and also the Behemoth could potentially kind of charge something that came close to the to the Devastator. Yeah. So I don't feel very comfortable necessarily at this point, just simply because there's so much stuff, uh, so many pointy lenses facing in my direction. Uh, the only thing that is nice is that the jacks are uh, in the back lines, uh, the Signar jacks, uh, so they won't really contribute at least for another turn or two. Um, and I'm hoping that I can actually uh, abuse uh, the situation on my left flank, so the right side of the screen, to take out a considerable amount of storm lances with Butcher and potentially the Juggernaut uh, before uh, any of his center units join the fray. Yeah. So um, what you, the way you responded to my first turn, seems sensible. Was basically getting a couple of a uh, couple of jacks up to absorb my alpha, and then you still got plenty of stuff uh, in the back line to uh, to do a counter. Uh, counter alpha, I guess a beta. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so obviously, to me, I mean, it seemed obvious to me. But on the right hand side, you're inviting a, a peace trade, yeah. um, and I knew that this unit of lances would destroy ruin uh, in, on a feet turn. If I didn't destroy ruin, then I would have a huge problem. Um, so you'd basically get that unit of storm lances for free. Uh, so. If we're going to be peace trading, then the storm lancers can at least take ruin with them. Uh, so that was the plan on that side. The uh, devastator is kind of annoying because um, with the feet, usually I could do a, a beat back. Uh, I wouldn't expect to do much damage to him, but at least I would have been able to uh, move him out of the zone. But he's no push, no push allowed on him. So uh, all I uh, needed to do was uh, sort of hold him up for a turn, really. So that was the plan with that. Unfortunately, all your stuff's out of charge range from the Stormblades, so I could then just use uh, the Stormblades to do some uh, shooting. Uh, so, yeah, so that's basically what I did. So you can see, um, yeah, the Stormblades just uh, assaulted the um, Demol the Devastator, and uh, it's like three boxes or something. And then that one Stormlance um, went up just to be annoying, just to uh, uh, give him some free strikes if you wanted to move somewhere else. Uh, I moved up the uh, Ironclad and the Stormclad, ready to, uh, on the following turn, to do stuff if necessary. Maddox uh, went into the forest and feated, uh, which uh, allowed everyone to be doing uh, like hugely powerful attacks. And uh, so the Storm Lancers on the right took down... Um, Ruin without really any sort of problem at all. No, I think two of them. Had, I don't think I even finished all of my charge attacks. Uh, the Electro Leaps didn't do anything to the Juggernaut. And then what I did was instead of um, moving all of my lances on the left flank up to the Devas to the yeah, Devastator, uh, I decided to charge them across to the Juggernaut instead. But I had some pretty bad rolls and I didn't manage to take out the Juggernaut. It just crippled his movement. Um, so what that resulted in on my right flank is almost two full units of storm lances that uh, had had their feet and hadn't really uh, got value out of the feet. So with the repositions, I just tried to spread them out a little bit, just to try and minimise what the butcher can do to them on the following turn. So um, I think you got value for ruin. Yeah. Just from uh, it, it costing almost two uh, units of storm lances uh, to be near where he was, and um, yeah, so I kind of uh, accepted that the storm lances were kind of disposable at this point, which I think in the grand scale of the game is a bit of a mistake, a little bit careless. I think I probably could have had the the smaller unit, the unit of three storm lances, could have just been a blocking line of sight, and then the rest of them could have been. Uh, uh, just further back and maybe uh, less inviting um, uh, target for the butcher so yeah um, a bit of a slightly squibby sort of um, feat but still okay and still lots of models on the table 
Also, maybe worth highlighting is that you took out one dog uh, with a, an assault shot of one of the Storm Knights. That's right. I don't think that was a good idea because it gave Butcher that extra two inches of movement and probably resulted in an extra three or four of my Storm Lancers being dead on the following turn. So I was. Well, I think it still would have made it because I. Yeah. No, I, I yeah. think I think it wouldn't have met it. Much. Okay. Well, but at least I could make it over the wall and. Yeah. So the the dog was there to die, and I kind of just accepted that challenge. You peel. It was kind of um, casual to take it, or you know, trivial to remove it. But I'm, yeah, still not hundred percent sure if that was the right thing to do. Then going into my turn, I definitely knew I had to use the situation on on my flank and take out storm lenses, which is nice because um, I typically don't get many chances to take out storm lenses <laughs> in melee because they're so fast and they have shooting attacks and all that kind of jazz. Um, however, I also saw that Medox was uh, potentially within assassination range of Butcher. Um, and after uh, quite a f quite a few measurements, uh, I was actually coming uh, half an inch short. Yeah, because of the yeah. push through the forest. Yeah, so it was a matter of uh, uh, pulling her two and a half inches towards me, and then that would actually mean I had a half an inch uh, missing. Um, so that was actually really a very close call. Would have uh, ended the game uh, nice and fast uh, yeah. to c compensate for the for for our last game, at least the one that, that was recorded. Mm -hmm. um, so that didn't work. However, I still wanted to go full aggro with with butcher. Um, so um, I what I started with was uh, giving the juggernaut in the back there some focus to take out some of the storm lances that were in the front. Uh, to minimize the amount of free strikes that Butcher would get by moving into, um, into the, the big circle of Storm Knights, if you will. Um, he did take one on the, on the way in because uh, in the back there, there's one Storm Lance uh, sitting there. Um, and then, um, yeah, he was in the middle of your, all of your Storm Lances um, and uh, pulled everything towards him. And uh, I killed all of the Storm Lances except for one and left uh, Lettermore without yeah. her horse. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was great, that was a lot of fun. I think that was the most damage Butchev has ever done for me. And also the first time that I actually took out this many Storm Lances. So moral victory goes to Leon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, however, having that said though, Butcher is sitting there uh, quite exposed. So at the end of my turn I feed it. Um, decided not to kill Lettermore with uh, spending an additional focus because um, uh, she probably would have done as much damage as uh, the damage I could prevent. And she still has a risk of uh, not hitting me. So. Um, just keeping all the six focused for myself at this point. Uh, then in the center, um, what what did sort of cause this is that you could actually charge Butcher with your uh, Stormclad. Yeah. Uh, hadn't I blocked line of sight with my uh, with my Devastator, so I had to energize the Devastator around your Stormlands that was blocking me up, mm -hmm. and then trample through the zone over one uh, Storm Knight, um, and then parking my Devastator there where you see it now yep. in front of the Storm uh, Stormclad. Uh, so you can actually draw a line of sight to, to Butcher anymore. Pretty smart, because uh, Butcher would have gone down to the storm pad on the following turn, probably. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, nice and jammed up. Um, and then Juggernaut moved, moved forward into the zone. Um, and the, what did the Behemoth do? He killed the Storm Knight, uh, storm Lance that was uh, previously engaging the Devastator. Mm -hmm. So not, not all that much. And all the, the support models uh, kind of uh, push forward, uh, but Butcher was too far from them to uh, to still protect much. Yeah. Yeah, so it was... Yeah, I was expecting to lose all the Storm Lances, uh, but even so, it's still slightly uh, shocking because uh, suddenly there's not much between Maddox and Butcher. Uh, so that's a bit of a worry. And... Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, so I basically had to try and decide what to do, and I didn't feel like because of this um, uh, devastator was there, I didn't feel like the assassination was really going to happen. So uh, the stormclad uh, did tr uh, spend the focus to try and throw the devastator at butcher, but I missed the um, uh, strength roll off because yep. of your two open fists. Um, so that didn't happen, and then I just smashed up the uh, Devastator a bit more with the Storm Lance. Then the... Oh, I could swap to the next slide. Then the um, Storm Blades uh, took down Behemoth, which was nice and satisfying. They yep. got a bit of revenge for their uh, for their friend. Uh, maybe, I think maybe the Ironclad did the final blow. Yeah, he did. It took the Ironclad as well. Um, so, yeah. So the Ironclad's up there and engaged by the an untouched Juggernaut. So that was the main problem there. 
And yeah, like I said, the storm lance, uh, storm cloud smashed up the uh, devastator, but didn't finish him off. Um, I think he still he took out the cortex, I believe. Yeah, cortex was so gone. So no more um, boosting. So that was quite nice. Moved Maddox backwards, uh, and I've realised now that I've actually made a mistake. So what I did with uh, to try and neutralise Butcher's threat for his next turn was uh, slamming the uh, Butcher with the Firefly, which knocked him down and moved him back a little bit and did a little bit of damage. I think not too much damage because of your huge stack of focus. Uh, actually, it was like five damage, so yeah, you were able to buy that completely. But what I should have done is I should have used the uh, extra focus that's on Maddox to cast a sail on the Firefly to allow him to move through... Uh, the because he didn't he had Pathfinder if he was charging, mm -hmm. but a sail allows him to um, slam mm -hmm. for free. For free. What am I talking about? What I'm saying is I'm not sure I had Pathfinder for slam. Oh yeah, you didn't. Uh, it's, but it's it was still. Charge. I only moved about. I only moved about five inches, and it. I would have had nine inches to move, so it's mm -hmm. possible it would have been okay. But I think that actually might have been an illegal slam there. Okay. Uh, but I'm not sure it makes much of a difference to the game overall. Um, so all that did was knock down Butcher and force him to use a focus to stand up. Yeah. Really, that was all it did. Uh, oh, it moved him back two inches, so maybe that would have maybe that would have done something. I don't know. Um, so I was quite pleased with that turn. I think I did quite a lot of damage to everything. Uh, so yeah, the Devastator's pretty badly crippled. Um, the Juggernaut is still fresh, but um, the Juggernaut can't really deal with the two heavies on his own. Mm. Um, and Maddox is in a pretty safe position right now. Uh, oh yeah, uh, Ladamore charged the Ogryn and the Electroleaps killed um, Madeline, which was yeah. quite nice because she's very annoying. Uh, and I took the Ogryn down to one box, which was <laughs> no, it wasn't quite what I wanted. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, so we uh, the next turn took quite a long. Yeah, <laughs> quite a long time, and that's why I, we should play Deathlock because sometimes I just start thinking and it takes way too long. Yeah. Um, so I had I had two options. One was continuing my killing spree and just enjoying playing Butcher for what he does, <laughs> which took me quite a while to to uh, plan out. And the other one was playing it more um, uh, passively, um, using the fact that that is actually going pretty well in attrition. There's still on both sides we're losing models fast, but um, I still have. Uh, well, I had three jacks at that point. Uh, one of which was a devastator that was down to six boxes, but still, I think I was in a pretty good place to um, to kind of pull back and uh, maybe start start scoring some points on my flag, and then finding a better angle to uh, approach the zone again with butcher and uh, my leftover jacks. Uh, so that was that, that was option number two. However, because I was already thinking for such a long time, I figured to to not waste Steve's. Uh, time <laughs> even more and just go for option number one enjoy playing butcher and uh, and, <laughs> and just charge in essentially um, so what I had to what I wanted to do is take out the stormclad because at this point there is not so much that can still threaten butcher all that much and the stormclad was definitely the one thing that was uh, still fresh and still far away from everything else that I could potentially take out in this turn so I moved away the, the devastator uh, into the forest because he had to had to go, uh, he was blocking my charge lane to the Stormclad, and as such, you could take a couple of free strikes with your Storm Knights, and uh, he went down. He had only had six boxes left, mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, this did open up the charge lane, so I charged Butcher into the Stormclad um, with only three focus on me, because uh, I also gave the Juggernaut in the zone two focus, and I had to use one focus for Shaking Knockdown, um, and then um, unfortunately, I couldn't. Um, then impending doom um, anymore because um, I also kind of felt like pulling the other ironclad towards me and then by flashing blade a couple of times maybe even take out bo both jacks uh, but I didn't have enough focus to do this so I had to just focus on the models that were close to me uh, flashing blading them and I killed uh, three storm knights and took out the, uh, the stormclad um, and then the protective plan in this case was uh, the Juggernaut that is behind Butcher now uh, with three focus on him and then him taking out the Ironclad, which uh, I think is uh, fair enough odds, um, mm -hmm. hitting on the six and uh, and then doing lots of damage. Four attacks with an ice axe. Yeah, I think that would have been enough. Um, and I unfortunately missed three out of a total of four attacks that I had. Yeah, that so, was uh, that was. 
game deciding whiff I think yeah that was bad um, so yeah um, uh, only took out, took out a couple of boxes leaving Butcher in the zone um, and then on my right side um, I did kill uh, Lenamore with my Bokur so some some revenge there from almost killing him Stormlance is dead as well <laughs> and the Stormlance are also smashed with the Juggernaut so uh, yeah risky position I knew this was the risky move um, probably could have um, saved my my game in this case um, by by playing a bit more cautiously, but this was definitely the more enjoyable of the two the two options, and also the faster one. Considering I already wasted too much time thinking about this turn. A butcher is crazy. He's so dangerous because there's a pen, impending doom. That's why one of the reasons why Nemo's so nice against him because mm. he stops all those pushes. But impending doom is a is a twelve inch bubble. If you mm. no no his his base is only one and a half, so it's an eleven and a half inch bubble. Good enough. Which uh, and everything dies. Everything dies. It's crazy. So it's very satisfying. Yeah. Uh, so it's, yeah, and then, uh, was it cost two focus or something? Yeah, two focus. And then this flashing blade is one. F so when you're buying attacks, you may as well spend the focus to get cast flashing blade because mm -hmm. it's just as good. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, very very dangerous. Um, so yeah, a bit of a sigh of relief that the ironclad still had his cortex and his left arm intact, which is kind of all I needed. Oh, it's worth mentioning that you're um, behind the uh, juggernaut's ice axe as your doggy, the Argus, is uh, uh, tying up the storm blades at the back there. So uh, it's assassinate or, or nothing really in this in this case. So uh, loaded up the ironclad with focus. Uh, I also uh, kept the maximum focus on. Um, Maddox, so I let the um, I, w I wouldn't need Pathfinder to reach Butcher with Maddox, uh, so I let all the upkeeps drop. Uh, I just needed to do the maximum amount of damage this time. So uh, the first thing I did was uh, the Stormblade Captain killed the Argus, which uh, then freed up the Stormblades if I needed them, which it turned out I didn't in the end. Um, the Ironclad then just walked up to Butcher, and I was boosting to hit to fish for the uh, critical knockdown. I got it on the first hit. Uh, so Butcher was knocked down, so melee attacks are then hitting automatically, then the Ironclad uh, had another two attacks. And uh, I actually think uh, with hindsight I probably should have spent the focus to get a guaranteed knockdown rather than mm. fishing for crits, because uh, defense 14 on the Butcher is an annoying amount if you've got uh, Matt or Rat 7. It's an annoying amount because you feel like you should be boosting, because uh, you've only got like a 60% chance of hitting. So. Anyway, so uh, Butcher's knocked down, Ironclad took him away his focus that he had, uh, was two two focus he had left? Uh, just the one. Yeah, one focus, so, uh, and then almost killed him. And then the Firefly, without any focus, just walked up behind him and poked him with his, uh, with his spear, and that was enough to finish him off. Uh, so I still had uh, Maddox with five focus, he could have charged the Butcher and probably... Uh, on her own probably had enough damage, but it was just that knockdown that was very important. At least from this angle it looked like without Pathfinder or Maddox. Well, well she's got reach. Through the forest. I no, no, I, oh, yeah. I measured it up. She's got reach, so oh, yeah. she could have gone along this line here and still got within. Uh, she definitely had line of sight to him. But so the pointy stick of the Firefly, Firefly did it. Yeah, so the Firefly actually survived the game, which almost never happens. And uh, that was it. So at that point I didn't really have any chance of winning on Scenario. And if I'd let Butcher survive another turn, he definitely would have killed Maddox. Yes. So the assassination was uh, all I could do, and I just had the stuff available to, to, to do it. So that was it, really. Yeah. So it was quite an interesting matchup. I think I was too careless with my Storm Lancers. Um, I kind of let them die uh, in exchange for Ruin mm. and, and a lot of damage on that other uh, Juggernaut. And that probably wasn't... I um, probably wasn't worth it. I think with my positioning on the re repositions, I probably could have set it up so that I could have saved maybe half of them, maybe left a couple of guys, and that would have prevented Butcher from moving up as far as he did. He would have been scared of um, uh, scared of uh, getting killed by the Storm Lancers on another charge. Uh, so that I think that that carelessness on the right flank was what allowed the aggressiveness of Butcher uh, later on. Um, yeah, so I think that was the main mistake that I made was just the, uh, an unfavorable trade, and I'm still struggling to learn how peace trades work. So there's um, the the initial state when you're learning the game is don't let anything die, 
and then you kind of learn that stuff can die. It's fine yeah. if you make a nice trade. Then that's, that's you should be doing that. That's what you should be doing. Yeah. Uh, Leon always says if you lose but you've still got most of your army on the table, then you've done something wrong. Yeah. Um, and then then the other side of that is not caring if anything dies, and that's where I'm at the moment. So <laughs> I still need to not it's, mind. It's a little bit like our, our like our last game that went on YouTube, where where I also figured, hey, I have to be more aggressive in this game, and I yeah. just moved everything up, and then I got killed. Yeah, the second turn. So you have to be you were both still finding the balance. You can't be attached to your dudes, but you can't just give them up for for nothing. Hmm. So I got ruin, and ruin would have been pretty dangerous. But um, he's seventeen points, and I gave up like twenty, like twenty eight points of storm lances to kill him. So it wasn't worth it. Uh, so I should, yeah, I should have been protecting them a bit better. Um, but apart from that, I felt like. It felt like you were the one who had to do the work to work out how to win, if you see what I mean. <laughs> yes. So I had my obvious like alpha, mm. fast alpha with high power, and it feels like that's what the opponent then has to deal with rather than me needing options, if you yeah. see what I mean. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty... I mean, it was a very fun game, first of all. Um, I'm happy that I leveraged Butcher a lot. I'm happy that I could actually use some of his abilities because again, again, what you just said against Nemo three, I just there's no option to do this. Yeah, uh, which takes I guess part of the fun away from playing Butcher. So that was cool that I could finally, uh, finally use him. Um, I'm actually quite happy with how I played, uh, to be honest. Uh, not only because Behemoth finally did something, <laughs> but also because um, of kind of seeing the angle of how to protect Butcher, how to use a Devastator properly. Uh, finally using some power attacks to my advantage, which I normally don't really do all that much. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think I'm slowly uh, starting to utilize pieces better. Uh, also, the my backline supports, so Orin, Maddy, putting them in places where um, they protect each other from, from electro leaps and, and things like this. Um, again, I, I would have been curious to find out what happened with the game if I hadn't gone full aggro that second time, because I knew this was uh, the most likely result. Uh, but it was well. I would have still had the stormclad then. Mm. Uh, so your de devastator would have been there, but not doing anything. So I think that would have given me the attrition advantage because I still have my two heavies, yeah. and you would only effectively have one heavy, yeah. uh, who would then die. So if the if butcher wasn't there, worrying me about winning on your next turn, then I all I've got is two two fully healthy or or f fully effective heavies against your two. No. On my turn, so that feels like it feels like if you hadn't have been aggressive, then the attrition would have been on my side. Yeah, I guess we'll never know. This was definitely <laughs> definitely the more fun option. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because I'd resigned to a lot of stuff dying, mm. then it was a lot of fun uh, having Butcher just sort of walk into the center of a load of big <laughs> models and just munch them. That's really cool. Um, yeah. So I think that's probably all we want to say. Is yeah. It? We're already running over a half an hour, as usual. So, yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Uh, I've got a tournament next weekend, so um, I will try and uh, report on all of those games. That's four games. Uh, so by the end of the day, I might not be that bothered about uh, taking photos and things, or I might not even it might not even be worth reporting if I play badly. Uh, but, um, yeah, I'll probably post those as separate bat reps because the last time I did them all in one bat re on one battle report and that was uh, a lot of work. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, it might be when. Well, we'll see how it goes. Uh, but that's the next thing I've got planned. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. You've seen the lists and we'll see. I was go I'm going to be playing Scorn a lot, probably. Mm. Like half the lists that are registered as Scorn. So, we'll see. Scorn, okay. Scorn is OP. Uh, well, no, <laughs> I, I don't think so. I think both of my lists have got game into Scorn. We'll see. Anyway, okay, so see you on the next one.